of babies having been killed in that Hamas attack. Consul General, um, I would like to start with you. It must be very difficult to be here in India and wonder what's happening to those you love back home. I must start by asking you the human question. I hope everybody you care for, everybody you love uh, is safe and well back home because every day brings a new horror. And this uh, bone chilling account of babies killed, though contested in certain quarters, now widely reported across uh, the world media is particularly a uh, searing uh, uh, Consul General. I'd like to start with your thoughts today, sir, please. Definitely, the uh, introduction was uh, even uh, harder than I think. It's uh, really a very sad age in Israel. Uh, we already you know in a state uh, like Israel, 9 million people, then more than 1,000 people brutally killed in every family in Israel. Everybody knows someone. And it's a dramatic time in Israel. It's such a small country to know the people. You know, I can give you a sample which is very simple. It's a personal. My uh, daughter, she's right now in Israel, and one of her best friends killed in uh, in this party. Then it's not only me, but when, I, when I'm thinking about the whole family, when I'm thinking about the kids, when I'm thinking about the elderly people, when I think about all these horrible scenes that we all saw, I cannot think about myself. I can think about how human beings, and I cannot even say that they are human beings because they are animals on two legs, and even to tell them, give them the name of animal is even too much. Do something like that. You say that to give them the name of animals is also a, a compliment. Uh, and you can't think of yourself at this point. Your daughter's best friend is among those who, who, who has been lost uh, to this horrific uh, attack. But Consul General, uh, you must have seen these reports. They've been reported across the world uh, of 40, an estimated 40 babies killed. Can you, can you give us some more clarity? We do have Israeli soldiers speaking on record saying babies and mothers who are hiding in protection rooms, i.e. sort of bomb shelter rooms within their homes homes were not spared either. There's a bloodied uh, cot. Uh, if, in fact, I want to play that image uh, again. We see the image of this cot. It's a blood-soaked cot. And, and it really, in a sense, captures the horror of what we're talking about here. Uh, but, you know, when we reported this story, uh, there were there were sections of people who pushed back against us and said, how do you know this is true? And, and, and I want you here to tell us what you're hearing about this, because it is really, uh, there are also reports that some may have been beheaded. The Hamas is now threatening to execute people people on camera. Consul General, I want your your, your information uh, on these reports. You must have seen them as well. Israel, uh, these, these hours, counting the bodies, it's not an easy, easy mission. I did it in the past several times, unfortunately, in my life, to identify bodies after heads cutting from the body. is one of the horrible things that you even think about it. And if you think about kids, that they don't have any relatives. And it's one of the hardest missions that we can do, and it takes time. Right now, the numbers are uh, still under investigation, but definitely the number is going to be even higher than even we think about it. I've heard about a 100 soldiers that try to identify bodies of more than 1,000 people. It's a very, very, difficult mission. I don't want to give numbers right now, but I assume and everybody believe in Israel that the numbers are higher than even our you that everybody knows right now. Yes. Um, I want to just bring in Helet Barrel and then I'll open this conversation and bring in our, uh, our military veterans. Uh, Helet, uh, when we were last speaking, it was absolutely hours after the attack had taken place. It's been a couple of days since then. How do you assess the situation? I think till yesterday, Israeli forces were really fighting to recover territory from Hamas terrorists who had infiltrated into your country. Uh, the offensive of Israel has only just uh, begun. How do you assess the overall situation, ma'am? Well, um, from a military operative perspective, uh, we do hold the territory down south now. It's not a matter of fighting back for territory, but we have to remember that many, many terrorists infiltrated. It was a very large infiltration. We're not sure of the numbers. 
Um, and so there are still pockets of terrorists or potential terrorists uh, that we think are in the area. So cleaning out the area uh, requires finding them, and that might take a couple of days more. And so the area is still um, dangerous for civilians, and uh, we are doing, uh, the military is obviously doing its best to get this over as soon as possible. It's a very uh, meticulous and demanding task uh, down south, uh, ex especially when you consider that it is being done under rocket fire still. But uh, it's also being done uh, in concert with a very, very expansive uh, military operation down in Gaza. I'm sure you've seen uh, the pictures from there. There's no doubt that in terms of um, the operational ability now, uh, the uh, Israeli IDF is only starting to show uh, its capabilities down there. But we also have to remember, we have a potential front up north vis-a-vis -vis Hezbollah. There have been skirmishes and exchanges all day yesterday. Um, <clears throat> this is another potential front, um, and the military is amassed on the northern uh, front as well, preparing and waiting for any potential conflict. Um, and that's the light in which I think we should also uh, remember um, President Biden's words yesterday, but also his deeds. We have the USS Gerald Ford um, very close by, more augmenting of uh, U.S. squadrons in the Middle East, um, as well as more forces being prepared and Iron Dome interceptors being sent. Uh, so what we're seeing um, at this stage um, is, um, is massive messages to Hezbollah and Iran, let's not be <laughs> confused about yeah. that, about what might happen next. But I want to say, while military, operatively, the everyday life here in the center in Tel Aviv and is getting more stabilized compared to where we were Saturday, um, despite the rocket fire, the news that we are getting day by day, hour by hour, about what happened there is getting much, much worse. Uh, because Israel is very meticulous about respecting its dead and its families, we're not establishing um, any kind of attempt to show those atrocities because it's so despicable and humane and, and horrible. But um, I have spoken to people close to me who are fighting down there, and I asked them this question, will Hamas at least release the babies and the children that it holds now? And he said to me, after what I saw, absolutely not. They they showed no mercy to children. No mercy. So so so, so speak a little bit more about that, uh, Helit, because this is on a day when headlines have actually come that that the Hamas has uh, has killed. Uh, some reports suggested some children may have been beheaded. An estimated forty babies. And you are saying that you can say on good authority that the Hamas has shown no mercy at all. To, to infants or toddlers? From what we see on the ground, it has shown no mercy to children, to women, to Holocaust survivor, nothing. This is not a matter of terrorism anymore. This is a massacre. This is worse than, than things ISIS. It's, this is the worst of ISIS. It's equivalent to that. This is what it is. And so we have to understand Hamas has shown its true nature for anybody who was ever confused about this being some sort of organization trying to liberate people or whatnot. It has committed atrocities on its own population, and now it's committed unspeakable atrocities on the Israeli population. All of this will be seen by the world. It's starting to come out because yesterday some foreign press was allowed to come in and look at the horrors in Gaza, um, in, in, the, in the Gaza village, which is an Israeli um, village, it's called uh, Kfal Gaza, and um, there's no doubt about what happened there. Uh, I just want to uh, bring the Consul General to add to that. Uh, the fact that Helit says that the atrocities, the full detail, the full horror of what actually took place is only just beginning to emerge. The situation is stabilizing, at least uh, you know, in Tel Aviv and, and, and surrounding areas. But you think of these beheadings, and, and I am going to, in a moment from now, play a particularly disturbing video where two, two children are crying because their sister has been executed. Uh, what is it that you want the world to understand? Because there are still people who are rationalizing what has happened. There are still people who are justifying what has happened. And I've been debating some of them on social media all, all, all day today. 
thank you. I I don't have the words even to describe. I mean, how to explain behavior like that? But you know what they did? They actually touched touched our historical nerves, and I think I like to make it in a very clear voice. And this uh, scene, this uh, horrible uh, clips that we saw, bring us out to our history, bad history. And I think that when you touch, and you have to understand what is the Israeli or the Jewish mentality or DNA or spirit, when you touch such nerves, it's something that I don't even think what's going to be the reaction. There is something in which is common between India and, India and Israel, and of course, there's a lot of common issues, but you know, is the family, the tradition, the spirit. When you behead your father or your son or someone from your close family, this is something that I cannot explain. I, I think that maybe in the past these people first of all will, will come one by one and reach them one by one because this crime crime this massacre as you describe cannot be left and forget forget for uh, forgiven this is something that we will do the utmost to reach all of these criminals who touch our nerves and i think this is something 